Okay, this is going to be a uh, quick tutorial on how to change the battery in your key fob and give the inside uh, cleaning. Uh, what you'll need one is the uh, key fob and a flathead screwdriver. A uh, butter knife will also work well. On the key fob itself, um, on the side with the buttons, is a little slide switch right here. If you take that switch and move it to the right with your fingernail, a little key comes out. It's hidden inside the key fob. That metal key comes in handy that should your key fob battery ever die or the car battery ever die, you find you can't get into the car because the key fob won't let you anymore. The metal key will uh, let you get into the car where you can pop the hood, pop the trunk, even lock the uh, glove box. Uh, once the key fob dies, you'll realize you can't pop the trunk or pop the hood uh, to give the car a jump without getting inside the car first. So that's where your metal key comes into play. Uh, usually in case of a dead battery it comes in uh, handy. So um, keep that in mind, that's why that, that, that's there. Um, move that aside. To get into the key fob itself, to open it up, where the key was hidden inside the key fob is a little hole. If you take your flathead screwdriver and put it into the hole and just give it a slight twist, not hard because this plastic is going to break, so just give it a slight twist. What it will do is it will kind of open up the side here. Uh, enough for you to get a fingernail in or a, a smaller uh, a smaller blade of a uh, of a screwdriver. Uh, once you have your screwdriver blade in there, it's kind of wedged in there. Just give it a quick twist, and you'll 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 hear it snap. Um, once it snaps, it kind of opens up a crevice. Follow the crevice down with your screwdriver. Give it a turn. Flip it over. Give it another turn. And you'll see it's kind of half open now. We're going to open it up like a clamshell. Um, just give it a, a pull it apart, be gentle with it. It's only plastic. You don't want to break it. Put your top part aside. Now what we're looking at is the keypad on the inside. That whole keypad just kind of lifts out. On the back side of that keypad is the circuit board. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. There's your battery now. Your battery's sitting on the back side here. Put your fingernail underneath it, pops right out like a dime. Um, when, when you're putting in your new one, what you want to be careful about is where the writing is, is the side that goes face down. It, it almost appears that you put this in backwards just by looking at it. In fact, I did on the first one I did. Um, you're actually going to put it face down into the, into your new battery face down into the, uh, the pod. Uh, once you put it into the, uh, once you get it into the fob, uh, batteries, you can buy a Radio Shack, by the way, they come in packs of like two, I, I think they come in packs of three, uh, and you only have two key fobs, so you're going to have one extra battery, and they're only like five dollars. Uh, so I like to change them about once a year just to, to keep the battery fresh. Uh, the, the older the battery gets, the closer to the car you have to be for the uh, key fob to work. I like to be about 50 yards away. Give it the old night rider, you know, engine start and scare people to death. So, um, change mine about once a year, and it's minimal cost. So, um, once you have that in, put that off to the side. Going back to the keypad now, the the circuit board that's inside this rubber keypad just kind of peels away from it, and it falls out in your hand. So, what you end up having is here's your contacts. So, when you press a button, it's actually hitting the contact here. Go into the circuit board and it's sending a signal to the wind module in the car that, that starts it, opens the windows, whatever. When these contacts get dull or when debris gets inside between the two, uh, people have reported their windows rolling down by themselves, trunk opening by themselves, car starting by themselves. That's because these contacts get dirty. Uh, start, it starts sends in a signal to the circuit board which sends it to the car and of course the car thinks somebody pressed the button in when in fact it's just dirt in there. Um, so you can take some alcohol, clean these up real good. If you don't have any alcohol you can take uh, an eraser from a pencil and just kind of give that a good cleaning with the end of the eraser. Make sure the inside here is clean. Uh, it's free of debris. You don't want any sand or dirt in there. Uh, once you have that all clean it goes in. The contacts go face down towards the buttons and just fits right in there. This, the keypad itself, goes right back into the key fob. It only goes in one way. There's a little tab right there. Um, I put it in, start at the bottom. Just, it just kind of, whoops, kind of taps right in there. Take, take your top piece. I start at the bottom, put it over the bottom, over the panic button, give it a press. Stay away from the panic button because on this first clip I actually hit, hit turned on the alarm. 
Um, so once you've got that on there, you'll hear it click, turn it on sideways, give it a press, and you'll hear it snap, 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 and you're all done. Take your metal key, slide it back in, clip, and you're done. And that's the end of this tutorial.